welcome to Mind Your Business, a channel where we are in our everybody business. If you don't mind getting in people's business, you're on the right channel. Talking about current topics and gossip. Well, I was very happy for Lucinda talking up today, speaking up for herself. And I'm still worried about Tim. Tim, if you need some help, blink twice. What is going on over there? Let's talk about it, people. Well, I've got notable, people. My Christmas crew, let's talk about uh, that first sight Australia. So it was a commitment ceremony. And of course, you know, they show what's happening beforehand. I thought it was interesting that you've got Tori and Jack talking about, you know, what happened the night before at dinner party and all the mess that happened with, between her and Tim. And Jack basically bringing her up saying, you know, she handled it well and they both handled it well. And I thought, I'm pretty sure it was Tori that done most of the talk. I didn't see you say much. But anyway, he decides that he's going to tell her he's written her a poem. And I like the way you make the bed is how it started. And I said, just piss off, dude. Like, what is this? What is this? So he continues. And I just thought, I didn't hear anything nice. Like, you've got beautiful eyes or something about her beauty or beautiful lips or something that was about personal about her. No, I didn't really hear much of that. So, but she was happy with that dry poem. So fine. Anyway, um, Lucinda tells Tim, you know, that she was very uncomfortable with the way things went down at the dinner party, understandably, because he was acting ridiculous. Tim, you know, as usual, is talking about he's a slow burn. At this point, I'm like, you know, fix up or slow burn somewhere else. Anyway, you know, you can tell that she's quite concerned and she feels like she's the weakest link. Now, we move into the actual ceremony and it's Ellie and Ben that come up first. And obviously she's talking about the fact that, you know, how things have been going with Ben, who I think is just very dodgy. He definitely beats around the bush. She's just beating around the mowy bush. Don't get to the point. And he's very dodgy to me. Anyway, she talks about him mocking her and, you know, telling her that she wasn't his match. And of course, they're asking him like what his problem is. And he's talking about, you know, it's the pressure and he wanted to get out. I love that the, the expert, John, is always straight to the point. So he's just like, well, do you want to be with her and do you want to be here? Because the man is full of excuses. If I was um, Ellie, I'd be very upset with the whole I'm in an army situation and how long he took to, to get to the point. Then he did say yes. And I just don't buy it. I just don't buy it. He's not convincing to me. I just don't buy it. I don't understand how she can't see through this. It's just ridiculous. Even Andrea said that she feels for Ellie because she feels like he's insecure. She can see that it's, uh, it's not right. It's just not right. And again, even Lauren and Jaden, they were also questioning, you know, the whole kid situation because he's not, he's just not a serious guy because he keeps changing his mind. It's no, it's yes, it's yes, it's no, it's ridiculous. And his whole, his whole reasoning of her being on the phone to his sister and hearing his niece and nephew is just, oh, shut up. You sound like you just made that up. I just don't buy it. I just don't buy it whatsoever. I just feel like he's a time waster and I would like Ellie to wake up, please. And thanks. Anyway, the experts told him he needs to be careful with his words, basically, and you know, be more authentic because, yeah, well, he just really isn't giving authentic whatsoever. Next, we had Tori and Jack. And obviously, they bring up the whole mix up at the dinner party with Tim. Tim is over there saying that he don't regret anything he said about it. You know, they ask Tori and Jack about intimacy and obviously there's still nothing has happened. And she's going on about this dry poem that, she, that he gave her that she's happy with. So she's happy with that, then fine, whatever. But I thought it was pretty dry. Anyway, you can tell she's really into him, but I'm not convinced Jack is into her at all. When they ask him, you know, are you into her? Oh, yeah, she's a babe. She's a babe. He doesn't really say anything about her other than that she's a babe. Yeah, she's good. Whereas she had a lot to say about him, about, how you know, how he's so nice and, you know, going on and on about it. So at the moment, Tori is very much giving Delulu when it comes to Jack. She can spot the red flag when it comes to Ben, but she can't spot it with Jack. Unfortunately, she has the blinkers on because she really is liking him. But I'm just not convinced, you know, she's actually looking long term. You know, he's like, oh, yeah, good to hear that and all this kind of stuff. I just feel like he's just bullshitting, you know, essentially. He just, I'm just not convinced. Tim of his bad mind self is talking about good luck to your six month relationship. <laughs> I still think he's bad mind, but he's got a, a point with those two. I just don't think that they're they're right. But Tim needs to mind his own business. Now speaking of Tim, Lucinda and Tim were up next. Now I was very proud with Lucinda because Lucinda definitely went in. I was like, yes, good on you, Lucinda, because 
what is this behaviour? And she let him know she's not into this behaviour. She was humiliated, particularly hearing about his 23-year-old, him pointing fingers at other people situation. Just being the mean guy, being very mean-spirited. And, you know, she let him know that she's not really putting up that nonsense because that's not her energy. Like, she's into good vibes, you know? And you can tell that she's been reflecting a lot because, really, she's been doing all the bending, like I've been saying before. I feel like she bends and she, you know is always acquiescing to him and trying to make him happy and trying to accommodate him. So, of course, she must be reflecting and thinking, actually, we don't really mesh on a number of different levels, but I feel like she does like him and she's still trying to give it a go. She has definitely paid attention to the things that are not working and the red flags that he seems to be displaying, which is good. Um, Because I just think she does deserve a lot better. And she is admitting herself that there is some misalignment between the two of them. Now... Tim was talking about, you know, he's got his walls up and basically when he lets his walls down, most of the women run away and says that he's basically a disaster. He doesn't want to unpack or address any of his stuff, whereas, you know, Lucinda, she is that energy that does want to clear it and, you know, unpack it and process it and help him out. And you can see that she'd be happy to help him out as the experts asked her and she said that she would absolutely. There was a point, though, when they asked Tim, you know, do you think she'd be a great person to help you do that? And he was like, yeah, because she's a great person. And he had lots of complimentary things to say, which I thought was nice because you could tell she was happy by that because I don't feel like he tells her that anyway to her face. So that was a good thing. But he also admits that, you know, he admits that obviously she's a good person. We can see that. But he admits that he looks for the negatives. We can also see that, too. But, um, you know, for her sake, I hope he fixes up because at this point I'm just like, hmm. You know, get together, Tim, because you're giving bad vibes and she's good vibes and bad vibes and good vibes just don't go together. So you need to either up the vibes or leave Lucinda alone. Let her be good vibes and find someone that's on that level because this is not it. Anyway, you see other couples that are quite fine. You know, Cassandra and Tristan, they would say they were good. She wants more affection. Eden and Jaden, they're good. He's really into her and she's really into him. So they're fine. Andrew and Richard, we know that they're good. They're kind of cute and he's funny. Then you've got Lauren and Jonathan. They're struggling a bit, you know, because he doesn't feel as heard. And she acknowledges that she doesn't listen to him. Like, she's got a blockage where she just, you know, is a bit mean to him. And she says things like he's boring and he's robotic. And he didn't like hearing that she thought that he was boring. And he did admit that her comments have been damaging to her his confidence. And then she admitted that she does tend to self-sabotage, though. So, you know, I can see that she does like him. He likes her. And I just hope that they get to fix it. I feel like she can fix up and, you know, take on the advice. I feel like they'll be okay. So we'll see what happened with those two. So lastly, we had Sarah and Tim. And I was very happy that Mel basically got in Sarah's backside about her behaviour. So I said, yes, Mel. Yeah, she told her about herself. And because she's come up on there talking about she wants to apologise to the group and not apologise to Tim. Excuse you, what is going on here? I love that Mel was like, well, hold on, you apologise to the group, but not to Tim. And she's like, well, he raised his voice to me. <laughs> I was like, OK, please, Mel, let her have it, please. And she did. And I was very happy watching that. See, Mel told her that basically she, her behaviour was absolutely outrageous and how she was shouting and pointing her finger and she couldn't believe how long she was she was going off and going on at him into the point where the man, you know, got to his breaking point. Yeah, they could see that as experts watching that the man got to his breaking point and then, rose his, then had to raise his voice. And even then, you know, you've got Tim still apologising and saying, you know, he didn't really want to raise his voice and all that kind of stuff. It was just interesting to watch, but I was so glad that Mel definitely told her about herself because I feel like she thinks that she's a victim and she doesn't like to take accountability you know and then now that she got called out she's like okay well now now I've been called out I apologize it's like okay <laughs> only because you've been called out right mm -hmm. interesting now when they asked her about why she cancelled all three of her dates the excuses were rubbish I'm sorry absolute nonsense because the first one was I'm not ready, sorry. You decided to enter this whole process to find your partner and to get married. This is the whole process. What do you mean you're not ready? Then you got, oh, your groceries are going to go off. <laughs> I said, what rubbish is this, please? <laughs> what do you mean? Anyway, 
And then, of course, the hungover one, which is just, it's just rubbish. So I was just like, come on, girl, you could do better than this. She just doesn't like to take accountability, and that's the problem. And I felt bad for Tim, because obviously he was saying that he's trying, and, you know, it's hard for him to be trying, and he doesn't feel like he's been acknowledged or appreciated, and it's kind of, ex- ex- it's exhausting. And, it you know, he feels rejected, which is really sad. And at one point, I thought it was really interesting, because Cassie, Cassie, again, to the rescue... Like, she did it at the dinner party. She swooped in and was like, oh, sorry, can I ask something, Tim? Because I was thinking, Who's that? whose voice is that? Is that Cass again? I was like, oh, come on in, Cass. And she asks this, Kim. She asks this, Tim, you know, are you... You don't really... She basically says to Tim, you know, you don't really seem like you're, yourself. Like, you're so bubbly. And, like, when I see you together, it's like it's not the same. He's like a, you know, reserved version of himself. Like, so is he afraid of her? She's just, just saying she just noticed in the shift and how he can be. And, of course, you know... You've got Sarah who's upset, so she's interrupted because she doesn't want to seem like she's a controlling wife. So she's like, can you not say that or, you know, put that kind of out there? So she was kind of upset about that. But I like that he kind of interjected and said, no, it's a fair question because, you know, they've been struggling and he admitted that he's basically dimming himself down to be around her and he's kind of hesitating with communicating with her, which is very problematic. I'm just like, look, you're sounding like you're in an abusive relationship. It's not healthy. It's giving very toxic. Do you know what I mean? I'm not saying she's beating him up, but it's giving that energy that she kind of verbally bullies him or something. Like, it's just, you know, it's like maybe emotionally abusive or something. So I mean, right there, okay? I don't know. We can't say where it is. I don't want to throw labels on it. But at the moment, something ain't right there. It's not giving good vibes over in that corner at all. The man seems like he's walking on eggshells. So I felt a bit bad for him. And he wants her to just make the effort. And she's sitting there kind of stony-faced and just like, what is going on with you? What's going through your head? Because uh, like I said, she doesn't really take accountability very well. But, or criticism. So so I was just like, hmm, maybe she's still processing, but this isn't looking so good. But then she also said that she just doesn't want to do things. She just doesn't want to do things with him on the weekend. You know, she's she's waiting to get the urge. (laughs) So I'm like, what's going on here? Like, why are you there then? Like, I feel like he needs to leave and I feel like she's kind of giving off toxic energy. But, of course, they both decided to stay and even everybody in the, um, all the other people on the show were looking very perplexed. Even the experts were looking like, oh, this is, this is interesting. So John told them to, you know, basically make each other the priority or, you know, basically forget about it. So I don't know about those two. I really don't know. I just hope they can switch things around. This is married at first sight after all. All kinds of things happen, but yeah, I'm definitely side eyeing Sarah and her toxic behaviour at the point. At this point, it's something came right. I haven't trusted her since she didn't want to give her phone up and show that you know there was no communication with her ex, her toxic ex or anything. You know, because I feel like what do you have to hide? It was a task. Why didn't you participate? That's always you know left me kind of scratching my temple a little bit. But anyway, I had a quick look on social media to see what people were saying, and here are some tweets that definitely made me laugh. Anyway, people, what do you think of the show? We know your thoughts below. Yes, so thanks for watching that. Don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, share and hit that notification bell so you know when I am uploading some more of people's business. So until then, my nosy people, stay blessed.